Good afternoon, everyone. I am Robin, and I work in healthcare. Now, the mission of our organization is to improve the health and wellness of our community. And we've done that through the years and with a number of vehicles, a lot of our partnerships in the community, but a lot of health education about the importance of having a primary care doctor, knowing your body, knowing your numbers, and so forth. And we've had seminars, very traditional lunch and learns, and workshops, and educational materials, and brochures, and so forth. But about 18 months ago, we decided to try something different, to spotlight those health issues that affect women. We tried the theater. Hmm. There's a stranger living in my house. I'm not sure how she got there or why she doesn't leave, but she seems determined to stay. Ironically, she looks a lot like my mother. <laughs> I noticed her first when I would look down at my hands. Those weren't my hands. Why, my hands are soft and smooth. Those hands have lines and a couple of little bumps where bumps shouldn't be. Arthritis. That's what it is. Now, I don't have arthritis. However, my mother does which is how I know those are her hands and not mine. At first, it was just the hands. But since then, it seems to have spread. This stranger follows me throughout the house. And even when I leave, well, I catch glimpses of her in store windows. She wears bifocals. Now, I don't need glasses. I never have. Why, well, I've always had 20-20 vision. Now, it does seem lately my arms are getting shorter, but that has absolutely nothing to do with my eyesight. The worst is when I stand in front of the mirror, she won't get out of my way. I'm trying to see myself, and all I can see is this old woman. It all started when I hit 50. The Big M. For men, the Big M is marriage. <laughs> but for women, the Big M is menopause. Now, men can escape marriage. <laughs> no escaping menopause. My doctor told me that most women go into that good night without any symptoms or problems. They just stop having their monthly nightmare. She says, my doctor that is, that it's only a vocal few who have all these issues. Vocal? More like bullhorns and loudspeakers. <laughs> now, I'm a pretty calm woman most of the time, soft-spoken even. That was until the menopause fairy hit me up beside the head with an economy-sized dose of menopause dust. <laughs> Why, even now, most of the time, I'm still soft-spoken and calm. Of course, now, don't you cut me off when I'm driving. <laughs> I might kill you. <laughs> and what is it with these, this loud music and these kids playing their cars and radios? Mm. Okay, I admit freely to taking a shotgun to my daughter's boyfriend's boombox one night. Now the police weren't called, so I figured no harm done. In a calmer moment, I did replace it. Having said that, my daughter's not speaking to me. Boyfriend dumped her. On account of her, as he put it, crazy ass mama. <laughs> <clears throat> now, it's not the anger that I mind so much. 
Those around me might not like it. And there have been times that my husband's locked himself in the bathroom crying. But overall, anger is not really an issue. What bothers me are the hot flashes. Oh. Now I ask you, have you ever tried to blow dry your hair when you're having a hot flash? <laughs> By the time you dry it, it's wet again. Back into the shower, back out to blow dry, bam, another hot flash. Back into the shower. Why, one morning, I took 12 showers before I ever got out of the house. <laughs> Should I even start on the weight gain? Mm. Now I ask you, are you supposed to have love handles on your butt? And that's with a girdle. I don't know, but somehow it just doesn't seem right. Oh, it's not so much that I've gained weight. Oh, sure, maybe a pound or ten. But uh, it's more that the weight that I have has moved on me. I've become a box. Now, I used to have a waist. I know this is true. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> but then somehow, overnight, it's gone. And instead of being 36, 24, 36, I become 38, 38, 38. I might as well be an ironing board. <laughs> they say this only lasts 24 to 36 months. That's two or three years. Yeah, right. You know, it takes an elephant 22 months to carry a baby to term. Perhaps an odd comparison, but a pretty good one. Sometimes menopause feels like you're carrying a 200-pound pachyderm around on your back. You certainly feel as wrinkly by the time you're finished. In the end, well, it's all part of being a woman. I wonder sometimes if we haven't gotten the short end of the stick. Because you see, we become a woman when we're still children. We have monthly cramps with the only escape being pregnancy or a hysterectomy. <laughs> we endure yearly doctor visits, opening ourselves up in ways that most women spend their entire lives trying not to. We bear the children. We go through childbirth. And when all these childbearing years are over, how are we repaid for our service to humanity in securing future generations? We're repaid with menopause. And our husbands leaving us for younger women. Now, sounds like a pretty raw deal. But honestly, given the choice, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> so what you experienced was one of about 12 vignettes that we put together for an original play called Ungirdled Truths. And we actually commissioned a local playwright to write it for us. And we presented it over a year to hundreds and hundreds of women. That's our cast. We actually cast our employees, thus the reader's theater style, because they're not actors and actresses. But the women in the audience that we performed before felt very connected with the women on stage because they were giving a voice to their health issue. And we did talk about very frank concerns and conditions of women, whether it be urinary incontinence, whether it be pelvic prolapse, whether it be depression or menopause or plastic surgery or just going to the gynecologist. I will tell you that there was some skepticism in the beginning. We're a conservative organization in a conservative community, but we said just let us think differently. Let us try something new. And that is our message to you today, 
that come up with ideas of, of, that are different and unique and original like we did. In fact, it was so successful that we are now in our centennial year and we're using this same idea of the theater and drama to bring the history of medicine to life with actors. So be original, think different, and get ungirdled. <laughs>